What's up in there guys, Brian here, D3, Topic of Scammer, here to give you another episode of my weekly Q&A titled The People's Questions or Answers, series of questions that have been sent to me over the past week. Uh, this episode was relatively basic, however, uh, we did get quite a number of interesting questions, so this is probably going to be the most, one of the more extensive episodes I've done in some time. So uh, before I start, I just want to thank everyone that sent in your questions. There weren't actually too many questions I was able to answer in the comment section, so if you don't hear them in the video, you will know where to look. And like always, if you do happen to enjoy this video by the end, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe because you track me in my future videos as well as to help increase the numbers of subscribers for my channel. So starting off with the first question, a very thought-provoking question coming from Zach Tarf. And you want to know, so do I think they could do a Mass Effect movie? They did one already with Paragon Loss, so it could work with the right director. Okay, here's the problem, Zach Tarf. It ain't even about director. I think you're talking about could they do a live-action one. And the answer is no. And it comes down to simply one thing. Money. You need a budget. At minimum, to do a proper Mass Effect movie, you are looking at, at a minimum, $200 million. Plus, probably tacking another $50 million because most people don't even know what Mass Effect is outside the game community. So, picture this. You have to go to a studio. Doesn't matter which one. You need to A, say, hey, I want to make a video game-based movie. That's strike one because video game based movies have a bad reputation. Second, on a franchise that most people do not know, that's strike two, which means that heck, just to get the word out, we have to add in another, say, 40, 50 million to promote the film. And on top of that, I'm asking for a minimum of $200 million to do it properly. So you're asking for a Star Wars quality film, because that's when you really think of Mass Effect. And what it's compared to, it is directly compared to Star Wars. So you are asking for a studio to put in a Star Wars budget plus a Star Wars amount of promotion for a franchise that hardly anyone knows outside the gaming community. That is never going to work. It's so it's, it doesn't even matter if you had a good director or a good writer or a good crew or a good production crew. It simply comes down to budget. And I'm sorry, it's never going to happen. Do you know what the biggest budget for a video game based movie was it just so happens to be world of warcraft that came out in 2016 and we all saw how that turned out that is the most amount of money that anyone has spent on a popular front just like warcraft and that was your result so yeah it's probably very unlikely that we will ever get a live action mass effect movie done properly so that is why I personally do not believe that a Mass Effect movie in the way that you're describing it can be done. It simply comes down to money. Next question comes from Cinevic. You want to know, would I like to see a sequel to Metal Gear Rising and do you think there's still a story to be told? Okay, if if they were going to do another Metal Gear Rising, it, wouldn't be, it shouldn't be a sequel because I don't think there's a story. There was never a story to be told at all with... With Rising, that's not even a story that I think that is very significant because it doesn't, it just brings up more problems, which is why I don't acknowledge it as being a canon game. If anything, if they were going to do another Rising game in that sense, I think the only story that should be told was the story that was supposed to be told, and that was basically to explain how Raiden saved Sunny from the Patriots. That was a, the original plot for what Metal Gear Rising was going to be, but for whatever reason, they decided to move it ahead of Metal Gear Solid 4 and therefore kind of ruin everything that Metal Gear 4 kind of ended on. Which is, again, why I don't acknowledge it as an, a canon story. It's more of like a what-if scenario. But, yeah, if a for whatever, if, if, the, if by any sort of miracle chance we did get a Metal Gear Rising game, another one, that's the story I would like it to focus on because that's what it was supposed to be in the first place. Uh, next question comes from the only new... Person, so welcome. Your name is Trevor Strickland. Strickland. Why does that last name? I've heard that someplace. Oh, Mr. Strickland from uh, Back to the Future. Are you? Are you related? I'm curious. But you want to know who would you consider to be the worst sword fighter in Final Fantasy and why? I can't really consider anyone to be the worst because, I mean, it's, 
I mean, I mean, put it this way. Mo almost every character from Final Fantasy's 1 to 6 can use swords. So you don't even get to see what what their swordsmanship is. And then when you look at Cloud during the events of Final Fantasy VII, he's more of just like a diet version of Zack Fair. And we've all seen how he, and, and you know, when you take into account that, you know, he fought against and alongside Sef Sephiroth. And then you go to eight, and there's only two sword wielders in that game. And then nine is completely forgettable. Ten, there's only two people who use swords in that game. And that's... Titus and Auron. I don't really remember anything about 11. Uh, 12 is the same way. Everyone can use a sword. Uh, don't know anything about Final Damnation 13. So I don't really think I can say who really is the worst. Um, I can certainly say there's certain characters that are either they're, they're split into two different camps. They're either speed fencers or they're power duelists. But that's about it. But yeah, I don't think I can definitively say who is the worst because there's definitely some characters I think that are like not quite as skilled as other characters but they have enough skills that that would technically allow them to get the better of someone who you would say technically has better technique and better skill with a blade but because they're using a certain form of it, it puts them at a bit of a disadvantage but that's that's, that's just me uh next question comes from Alur Serna and you want to know what is the most boring game I've ever played most boring game I've ever played. Um, probably Silent Hill. Um, I don't really do too well against horror. Not because I get scared, but because it, I just don't find it scary at all. And I just found the Silent Hill games, especially the first two that I tried, I just thought they were just so, so boring. I mean, look, I don't mind a little bit of horror, but you got to add in a little bit of action. I think that's why games like... Resident Evil's like 4, 5, and 6, well, mainly just 4, and something like Dead Space work more for me because it's kind of a balance between horror and a bit of action without one kind of overriding the other. I mean, that's kind of why, you know, something like Alien is like my favorite entry in the front is because, you know, in the first Alien, you're only dealing with one and you're dealing with a bunch of truck drivers who don't really know how to fight back. But I think what's scarier is if you go into a situation with confidence in that proofs do not be enough to help you through the situation. That is something I find truly scary. Uh, but in terms of Silent Hill, it just felt like a slow grind and boring game. I mean, I knew there were jump scares and you were gonna see weird looking things, but at no, no point did I ever get scared of anything. So yeah, I would probably say Silent Hill one or two. I think that's probably the most boring game I've ever played. Uh, next question comes from Knight at Slayer 666. You want to know what is the hardest boss fight out of all the Assassin's Creed games and why? Oh, with the whys. The whys always help questions get into the video. Uh, I don't know. Maybe one of the... You know, one of the mythic beasts in, I guess, Odyssey. I mean, you fight a lot of, you know, Greek mythology creatures. I guess one of them would be hard, I guess. I mean... Fighting the Minotaur or fighting Cerberus. I mean, I, I, I mean, I didn't play the DLCs for those games, so I don't know if I'm missing anybody. But I just, just off the top of my head, those are the ones I, I guess were the toughest for me at least. Okay, guys, I apologize if the whole video suddenly looks a lot brighter and a little bit different. But my, my camera's battery actually died before I got into the last question, so there we have it. So let's continue on with the last question of the episode. And it actually comes from the Batman of Neo Gotham. And your question, uh, I was kind of uncomfortable about because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really like the question itself. But um, because I thought it was a little bit disrespectful. But I'll, I'll get into it. But basically, what you wanted to know was which of the seven forms of lightsaber combat would I consider to be the most useless in terms of a real life situation? Now. Using the term useless is wrong because none of them are useless. Each of them was designed specifically as a reaction to learned lessons that the prior forms did not did not answer problems. That kind of explains the development of the seven lightsaber forms. Each one was built for specific reasons. So form one was de was designed for crowd control. Form two was for blade on blade combat. Number three was for defense. Number four was for mobility. Number five was for counterattacking. 
Uh, number six was uh, versatility, and seventh was built for emotion. Each one of them is specifically designed to give you an advantage in a certain situation. Now, that's not entirely always universal. There have been several examples in Star Wars where someone was using a form in a situation it wasn't designed for, but because of their mastery of it, they were able to still function effectively. So it's it's it, it's not always a guarantee. Trust me, there have been plenty of examples where someone was using the right lightsaber form, or using a superior or, or or a fighting form that should give them the advantage, and they still ended up losing. So to say that it's useless is just wrong. It pretty much depends on what you're trying to achieve. Like, you know, you you typically wouldn't use form four in a crowd control situation. That's you know, Form 1 is built for. But Master Yoda has proven that it works very, very effectively in that situation because of how well he's mastered it. So, ultimately, none of the lightsaber forms are useless in a real-life situation. It depends on how you choose to use them. It's, it's, it's not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee that you'll get out of a situation if you use the right form. It's how you execute it. So, again, Batman. None of the seven forms are useless. It just depends on what you prefer to want to learn to prepare you for situations that you may not know yourself if you will ever find yourself. Maybe, maybe you'll maybe you'll spend your whole life training in one form and never find yourself in the situation, which was a major issue that got a lot of the Jedi killed. You know, and uh, throughout throughout the Clone Wars, that 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 was a common thing. But that'll about do it for this episode of People's Questions. I want to thank everybody for seeing in your questions I was able to answer in this video. Now, uh, I would like to let you guys know that next week I will not be here in Vegas. I will actually be in El Paso celebrating mine and my brother's birthday together. So when I start filming this episode next Tuesday, next Thursday, It'll actually be my birthday. His birthday will have been the day before. So to give you guys a little bit of a twist, I would actually like for you guys sending questions for him to answer. Uh, I think that would be relatively fun. That way we can kind of mix things up. Maybe you want to ask him some ask him some questions about me or ask him some questions about him. That way you guys can get to know him a little bit more. So make sure to send all your questions in and make sure they are they get to me before Thursday, which will be my birthday, before I start, we start filming the next episode. Because, again, I will be in El Paso. And like always, I want to thank you guys for watching. You're awesome. And I will see you guys next week.